for open RAN architectures and the technology supporting them to mature, a great deal of testing needs to be done to check functionality and interoperability. But who's actually doing and enabling such testing? Well, one organization enabling such processes is Digital Catapult in the UK. And I'm talking today with its director of technology strategy, Paul Seeley. So Paul, thanks very much for joining us today. Good to see you again. Um, so to start, can you tell us about Digital Catapult and the role it's playing in the UK's communication networking sector? So Catapult is a, is a UK um, research technology organization. We're focused on <clears throat> accelerating the adoption of advanced digital technologies. And uh, we have diff different digital technologies we work on. So, for example, AI or immersive or distributed systems on, on, on distributed ledger, for example, and also IoT and 5G. So we've been focusing on the adoption of those technologies and encouraging them, really looking at the use cases uh, and how they might be applied uh, and to, to try and join up um, innovators who've got great ways to use the networks and and also the adopters, the end users. Uh, so for example, in the 5G space, we've been doing, um, historically, we've done a lot of work on um, private networks and the adoption of private networks and uh, in say the uh, industrial environment, or it might be uh, with creative, uh, we've done some great work on um, on 5G festival, which is all about uh, getting, getting different organizations to collaborate together to produce to do music together, for example. And so the really, that, that's, that's what we're interested in, the adoption of advanced digital technology and helping things go from, go, go from great idea into the real world and start to get used by end users, if, if that makes sense. Now, why is Digital Catapult involved in the development of Open RAN and, and how does this fit in with your focus on digital infrastructure? So up until up until now, as I say, we've been really looking at the the um, adopters and how to apply digital technologies rather than the actual infrastructure itself. But Open RAN has sort of just come along. It's kind of like a like a movement and architecture, as I think you've been describing it. Um, and and what we can see is is that the the the, the, the themes of openness and innovation um, are really core to what we're looking at. So we want to encourage innovators in, into the technology. And here it's an opportunity, uh, a big opportunity for, for shifting, um, shifting the landscape and encouraging new innovators into the telecoms ecosystem. And looking at the UK, I think maybe maybe 20 years ago, there were, there were a lot more organizations, companies, and a lot more R&D specifically in the UK. And so this is, in some senses, a historic opportunity for the UK to, 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 to get more innovators in, into the network. Um, and I think, I firmly believe that this isn't about, um, uh, about doing anything against the incumbents or the, or, the, or, the, or, the, or the leading vendors because they do a great job, but they're looking across the globe. Um, and I think this is really helping them uh, and it should help them by bringing in, effectively bringing in new blood into, into this activity uh, and should encourage I innovation um, and, and, and help them innovate better, and particularly in the context of, uh, of cloud technologies and, and the sense that, that there's lots of innovation going around outside the telecoms uh, ecosystem. So it, bringing that into the ecosystem would be a really great thing to do. I think from our perspective, we're also, we're looking at it from the two directions of disaggregating into different, different, um, different items, but also the movement of virtualization, I think, um, moving to software versions of, 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 um, of, pure telecoms equipment. It's a slow march across the whole network. It's gone from the core, uh, the operations environment, and now it's moving into the RAN. I think that's something that we, we think is a, is a great opportunity, as I say, to bring in innovation and to help uh, innovators in the UK. Okay, yeah, fantastic. Uh, now, with Open RAN, it's still sort of quite uh, early days in many ways, although there's, there's networks uh, already up and running that are, are based on this architecture. Um, so, as we mentioned, sort of testing is all important here. So, can you tell us about Sonic Labs and how that fits into what you're doing? So, Sonic Labs, is, so Smart Open RAN uh, Network Interoperability Center. So, this is this is a piece of work that we um, we put together, and the gestation came through discussions with um, DSIT, the Department for for Science, Innovation, and Technology, and also Ofcom, the regulator in the UK. So, all three of us were looking at Open RAN and seeing the opportunities for for different reasons. So, we're looking at it from an innovation perspective, uh, and and DSIT looking at it from a diversification of the telecoms ecosystem and uh, um, supply in the UK, and Ofcom looking 
looking at it from the, from from their perspective of of, of it being it being uh, something that's happening that they really need to understand. And we, we were looking at this and thinking that that um, that for it to to evolve, we really need to understand uh, understand what it's doing. But also from an innovation perspective, um, you need to, you need to um, help these products to all work together. If you've got new vendors coming in, then then the problem is interoperability between them. And then the problem is to to get interoperability, you need to test it. And we want to 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 provide a neutral environment where all of those ca uh, organisations can work together, um, and uh, and so that we can foster this sense of uh, foster this sense of collaboration uh, and help the whole the whole um, uh, technology ecosystem in the UK. So from our perspective in the UK, um, so that you can you can get different products from different vendors to all work together in a working end to end system. And our thesis is that is that you need to do more testing. You need to do more interoperability testing to, to, to get this to a point where then end customers can work with it. So we're we're trying to sit between so so we want to work with um, with working products. So someone's got a open RAN product, it works, uh, it does what it's supposed to do. Um, and we want to get that to a working end-to-end -end system with other vendors that then can go off to um, off to uh, a potential user, an end user, who can then do the, the, the really deep, in-depth testing that they would need to do and the integration into their internal systems. And so we can focus on that kind of like breadth across that, working with lots and lots of different vendors as, as far as possible. Okay. Uh, and what's the status of Sonic Labs uh, right now? Uh, has a large-scale interoperability and integration testing facility been developed already? Uh, and if so, what kind of testing is already underway and who's actually doing it? So um, we've been going two years and we started off with a smaller project where we just built some systems and, and kind of proved that we could do that. And then over the past year, we've been running through a, a, a much larger program. Uh, we built uh, built our as we've been going through, we've been using our, our 5G test beds, but now we've built a dedicated open RAN uh, test bed, which we had a showcase for um, just um, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, last month, where we where we ran through and, 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 and showed that environment. So we built that environment with all the open RAN specific test equipment, um, and um, and we are now uh, now using that uh, obviously. Um, but what we've been doing through that whole process is, is as well as the physical environment and the testing, we've run through. Um, we've got a, a series of engagements and um, external outreach, essentially, where we are going to the market, talking with all the potential products and vendors and encouraging them to, to, to work together and building uh, we're calling cohorts so we bring together a group of products to work together to test end to end and and to, to, to get a system working and then to ideally swap with other products so that you can prove that you can swap uh, across these these new interfaces in, in the open architecture and so we've been doing that for a while uh, our focus is is on the end-to-end -end interoperability testing so so you could test on um, for example you can do a lot of in-depth conformance testing, say on uh, an open RAN uh, radio unit or an open RAN distributed unit, and you can just test that. Our focus is not on that; it's actually on getting a working end-to-end -end system, and we're using real devices as well. So, so it's to prove it, um, to prove it, so that you can you can actually use an application that's working across that connected into into a core network. And so, so we've been doing that. Um, I think we've now got, uh, we've worked with 36 different open round products and um, 15 different vendors. Uh, we've had three cohorts and now we're moving on to a fourth cohort and we will be con continuing that as, as, as a sort of, sort of probably every six months or so bringing in a new set of, a set of cohorts. And on top of that, we're also um, encouraging uh, innovation. Uh, we think that the radio uh, intelligent controller is a really interesting area. It's something that open round brings um, that's additional, it's kind of um, the optimization or the auto, auto, automate, automation of, of a mobile network in terms of uh, the, the experience and service. And, uh, and so we're trying to encourage, uh, encourage innovators to use that platform. Uh, so these potentially people from outside of, of the telecoms uh, domain to, 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 to make use, use of it. Uh, people who've got expert in AI or machine learning capabilities, they can apply to that. So it's something we're doing on top of that. And who's actually sort of using physically at the facility? Is it digital catapult staff that are doing the testing, working with vendors or are vendors coming in and using that as a, a space where they can uh, work together to do the interoperability testing? That's a good, good, good question. So, so, um, so we are doing a, a, a kind of like mixed 
mixed environment. So, so we've got the testing equipment, and we have uh, we have a team of team of technical experts who who are able to do this. Around fifteen people who uh, mixture of designers and architects who look after the platform, but also the the, the people who are experts in using the test equipment and, and, and testing it. Um, and so we are when we bring together a group of vendors, um, we we put together a design of what that system will look like and then we uh, and then we uh, work with uh, probably a lead we would call it a system integrator it's from a software system integration perspective uh, who would then who would then work with the different product owners and with us to build an end-to-end -end system on the platform that we've got and then we can run through the testing and the testing systems are largely run by ourselves but in terms of the integration of 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 the working open run uh, open run system or um, that that is done as, as a combination of us and uh, and the vendors, um, and that will change through each each cycle of 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 of, um, of testing with the new new system. So, through these processes, how can Sonic Labs actually make a difference to the network operators, to enterprises and vendors? What what are the potential tangible outcomes? from this work? I mean, is, is there some kind of certification or is it just a, some test results that are sort of signed off by Digital Catapult that these companies can then take and, and, and show to potential customers? Yeah, um, you kind of half answered that question. So, so in terms of certification, um, we're, we're not doing certification. There, there are um, there are organisations already doing certification, and our our intention, with government funded, is to not compete with the market, uh, and and to be to be neutral. So so we're not doing certification that you might do from from uh, say Oran Alliance. Um, however, we are reusing the same kinds of kinds of testing so that it's applicable. And so what we are doing is is doing that testing, and giving it to the vendor, and then the vendor can share that with with them um, uh, with their. Um, potential follow-on relationship uh, with that, and we'll make sure that it's all, all, all the right level of, of quality and, and the system that we're using able to able to do that. But what what are we doing? So first of all, um, we're giving the information. So this is all done in a very transparent way with all of the participants. So then uh, they can see the end-to-end -end performance. Um, and ideally, what we're trying to do is get products together that weren't working before. So they'll see the end-to-end -end performance. Say that it's. Um, Usually, when you first try things, it doesn't work as well as you would like it to do. And then they will look at the test results and work out what that is. And, and we can do further deep dive to help them. Uh, and then we might get um, software upgrades or feature changes. Or, or a lot of it actually seems to be around around the um, instructions to make sure that there aren't any hidden hidden um, hidden tweaks that were done at, at some point. And so we run through all of that process so that you can get a working end-to-end -end system that, that performs really well. Um, so that's kind of kind of from their perspective what we can do, um, and we can help them troubleshoot, uh, et, et, et cetera, et cetera. And then from from the end users, the adopters, so this in enterprises or or, um, or uh, mobile operators, for example, um, we will our ideal. Our idea is to give them effectively a pipeline of different different products that they can bring on, um, so they get a um, so they get uh, a, a greater a greater pool of, of of vendors and products they can work with. Uh, having worked in an operator myself, I know you can this realistically you can only work with a handful of organisations just because of the depth of testing that you're doing. It's 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 huge amount of investment on your side on the side of the the operator. So so what we can do is bring in a breadth of 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 different different products that you know have got to a certain level of, of capability. We're currently working through, I think, as you said, um, we'll, we'll give a sort of a, a stamp to say that that uh, a, a sort of, uh, I think we're calling it a digital digital stamp, or, so that we can say that we have, we have um, through Sonic Labs, done this testing. Um, um, but because it's really useful for the end users to know what has been tested and what, do, what has not, so that they can then, then, then get confidence in that. And we, we want to work through that more and more to really, to really understand what, what's needed. Something I wanted to bring up as well is, is that um, I see our role as helping a product market fit in the UK. UK is not that specific a market in some senses. It's like 2% people typically say of the global market, um, but it's not that different to others, but it, there are some differences. And what we're trying to do is to help the vendors really understand what's needed in the UK market and help the uh, the, the the organizations in the UK that need need open RAN products um, to help get their 
what they need to to to, to the vendors. And so we're setting up, uh, we've set up uh, an advisory board and industry group. So we've got a mobile operator industry group. We've got a wireless infrastructure industry group, where the intention is to to really understand uh, what the need is and help with the I see it as the product market fit, so that you can get a product. Um, so the vendors can can then when they turn up to someone who they want to buy their product can say, well, actually, this does what you need uh, for it to be able to work in the UK. It could be the spectrum, could be something that comes up quite often is, um, I think the UK has uh, a lot more prevalence of, of network sharing, uh, this idea of neutral hosts as well. Um, I think there's, there's a lot more in the UK. Uh, and, and there are specific uh, integrators that would do the deployment integrate system integration as well. So we want to help all of that um, sort of to make the whole path from uh, innovator got great product that does one thing really well to get it into the into into the market where it can actually be used. Okay, excellent. Um, uh, and I can see th that role being really useful uh, and, and helping to to bring companies that might struggle otherwise to, to find a route to market to, to come on and, and get some visibility. Um, so from, from what you've been doing the past few years and from how the market is developing, uh, what's your view of Open RAN? I mean, do you see such architectures playing a significant role in the UK's future digital environment? And, uh, and specifically, what kind of impact might it have on the UK comms technology sector? Do you feel that this might encourage uh, companies to, to do something new, something different to try and get involved and, and really sort of, you know, be a catalyst, if I can use your your word, a catalyst for further innovation that otherwise might not have happened? Um, I don't know, it's quite, it's quite hard, to, uh, hard to answer that without saying yes, of course. Um, so, so um, yeah, so, so we're involved in Open RAN because we think that it can be that, that catalyst. Um, uh, a kind of question is, what do you think will happen? I think that the um, openness and multi-vendor moving into the radio network is is something that will happen, and I think that uh, the move of uh, move to virtualized environments and off-the-shelf hardware, for example, which means that then that the network becomes software, um, is, is is something that that, that will, will will come. And um, I I believe that this means the UK has an opportunity to take a, a larger role than it has done, say, in the past ten years in, in the telecoms ecosystem, because it's quite hard to go from from where where, where we are now with with um, Lots of pockets of expertise, but no real major player. It's quite hard to go from that to to to, to pr provide as you would need to today to provide an entire radio access network, including the operational support. Um, however, um, being able to provide, say, a component of of that, it could be an accelerator card, for example. So there's 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 some some, some really really interesting companies looking at that space or it could be uh, building a, a, just a radio unit just a, just just one part of it that solves a specific problem um, and with with the open run logic if you've got interoperability you don't have to have a radio unit that solves every single I think so, some organization told me that there's 30 for, 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 for full market fit globally you need 30 different types of radio unit you can't go from nothing to 30 and have that to, um, supportable in a live network um, so so if you can get from nothing to, to one or two, uh, and you've got a multi-vendor multi -vendor model, then that, that gives an opportunity. So I think it really is a great opportunity for the UK's um, pockets of expertise to, to start providing parts of, of, of the overall, overall network. So I'm pretty optimistic still. Okay. Excellent. Well, you've got to be optimistic. I mean, this is, uh, you know, what you're aiming to do, and and hopefully we'll see the the fruits of these kind of uh, efforts in the, in the near future. Well, Paul, uh, thanks very much for for bringing us up to speed with what Digital Catapult is up to, and I look forward to speaking to you again in the future and finding out how things are developing. Thanks very much. And thanks very much for um, asking me to uh, join. <laughs>